how to configure applications running in Kubernetes, how to deal with secrets, and how do you manage all of this when working across multiple environments? Let's find out. Hey guys, it's me, your tech bud, and in this video, we'll see how config management works in Kubernetes. Kubernetes is all about containers. So before we get into Kubernetes, let's understand how containers work because that's going to influence how we do things. Containers are started from container images. A container image is nothing more than a compressed archive, something like a zip file. And everyone who has worked with zip files before knows that they are immutable. What I mean is, their contents cannot be changed without creating a completely new zip. Remember this property, we'll be circling back to it in just a bit. The question one must ask is, what are we zipping in these zips? The answer is, a file system snapshot. Without getting too deep into it, think of it as an archive which contains all the libraries, binaries and dependencies your app will need. Everything except the Linux kernel itself. So when you unpack the zip and run your app in it, it already has all the necessary files in the necessary locations for it to work properly. And remember that container images are actually immutable? That makes sure the app always has the exact same environment every time it's unpacked and run. Okay, the environment isn't the same every time because there could be some slight variations. You know, like different VMs having different Linux kernel versions. But now, we're going out of syllabus. If you've been paying attention, you've probably guessed that our configuration needs to be a part of this container image. Putting it in the container image will make sure the container is run with the perfect configuration every time. Be it environment variables or configuration files, you can technically package it up in a container image. Problem solved, right? Not really. Here's why. Container images are immutable. When you put the configuration in a container image, you will have to build a new image every time you want to change its config. This causes a few problems. The biggest problem is that building images takes a lot of time. You'll have to build your code, download dependencies, and push the image to a registry. And it doesn't end here. You'll even have to download this new image on every VM you want to run it on. All these steps takes compute time, which costs money. The second problem is that you'll have to deal with a lot of container images. This can become problematic, especially when you have to run the same version of your code base in multiple environments. It would be a lot easier if you could simply reuse the same image for such a use case. Luckily, tools like Docker foresaw this problem and have given us ways to solve them. The idea is to continue building images with all configuration baked in with the ability to overwrite them during the unpacking process. Let me explain. While running a container, I can override environment variables defined in the image by passing the hyphen E flag. I can override as many environment variables as I want. Similarly, for files, I can mount files or even complete directories from the host onto the container. These are called volume mounts. To be clear, contents from the host aren't copied inside the container. They are literally sharing the same file or directory. So be careful on how you use this. I've got a challenge for you guys. What are the possible attacks that can happen when using host volume mounts? Comment your answer below. So these two mechanisms allows us to reuse the same container image and simply replace the configuration whenever needed. But remember, whenever you're working with containers directly, it is still your responsibility to make sure you ship the necessary configuration to all the VMs that will be running those containers. Okay, I know, life isn't fair. Or is it? Now that we know how configuration management works for containers, let's see how Kubernetes makes things easier. In the previous video, we saw how we can use pods to deploy a container to a Kubernetes cluster. Let's build from there. This is what a pod looks like. Setting environment variables really is pretty straightforward. Simply specify a list of key value pairs for each environment variable you would want to set. While this solution works, it's got a small problem. Let's say we've got two pods. Both of them depend on a Redis cache and accept environment variables to configure the cache's host and port. The problem is, if tomorrow the host of my cache changes, it will get really difficult for me to identify all the pods which will get affected by it. I'll have to go ahead and manually make those changes to all of them one by one. 
not cool. To solve this, Kubernetes gives us config maps. Config maps are nothing but objects which store a bunch of key value pairs, something like this. Notice how I stored the host and port of my cache in the config map now. In my pod, instead of passing the values directly like I'm doing here, we can simply load all the keys of the config map as environment variables, something like this. I can also cherry pick which environment variables I want to load. That would look something like this. Just remember, when cherry picking, you will have to repeat this config for each key you are interested in. When we apply such a pod, Kubernetes will load the config map onto the node the pod is scheduled to run on. It will then set the concerned variables and only then start the container. This helps us centralize configuration in one place, within config maps. Now I don't really need to play treasure hunt every time I need to change one tiny piece of configuration. By the way, if you've been enjoying this video and are finding it helpful, do smash that like button and also subscribe. It really helps. Config maps can be used to configure files as well. Let's say we wanted to mount our two variables as two separate files. First, we will have to create a volume on the pod level. We then mount the volume in our container at the pod we are interested in. This will go ahead and mount all the keys present in our config map as separate files at the specified location. Note, Kubernetes will use the keys as file names. So if your config map looks something like this, you can expect a file with the name of foo.txt to be created in the directory you mentioned. Just like environment variables, you can also cherry pick the files you want to mount. Simply provide all the keys in the config maps that you are interested in. And as a bonus, when using this method, you get to choose the name of the files as well. While config maps are amazing, there are a couple of things you need to remember before you start using them. First, when you mount a config map as a volume at some path, all previous files in that directory will be deleted. So always make sure you mount config maps in unused directories. Second, updating the data in a config map doesn't automatically update your application. To be clear, you will notice the updated data in the pod immediately. However, since most applications read such files just once during the startup, this change is meaningless. In other words, you will require a mechanism to perform a manual rollout of your deployments which will restart the pods. Check out this tool, you'll find it helpful. Third, you cannot store more than one megabyte worth of data in a single config map. Consider breaking down config maps into reusable groups wherever possible. You can always use more than one config map in a single pod. Fourth, files mounted by our config maps are not writable. The only way you can update its values is by updating the backing config map. And finally, if you want to manage sensitive configuration like database credentials, consider using secrets instead of config maps. They work exactly the same way and have some additional features to secure their content. I'll probably make a video on secret management soon. The link will be up there. Wow, that was quite a list. That brings configuration management to a wrap. But what do you do when incorrect changes made to configuration makes your entire app crash? Well, check out this video to know more. I'm really looking forward to hearing your answers to the challenge I've put out for you. Make sure you leave a comment to get featured in the next video. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful and don't forget. I am your tech bird, here on YouTube and hopefully in real life.